Welcome to The Spear, where we peer straight into the heart of all things SJSU athletics. I'm Jeremy Cummings. And I'm Sandy Chandog. Thank you for joining us on the first edition of The Spear. The women's basketball team lost its third straight home game on Saturday, falling to UNLV 63-55 after beating them two weeks before in Las Vegas. It was a game featuring two of the top players in the Mountain West Conference in Des Ramos and Dakota Gonzalez. Our very own Ryan Vermont was there on the scene to cover the action. Ryan Vermont with the spear here after the San Jose State Spartans 63-55 loss to the UNLV Lady Rebels inside the event center. It was a matchup of sharpshooters between UNLV's Dakota Gonzalez and San Jose State's Des Ramos. Basically, it comes down to who's better, Dakota or Des, and Dakota was better today. Gonzalez finished the game with 31 points compared to Dez, who had a respectable 22 of her own. The Rebels out-rebounded the Spartans by 23 throughout the game and outscored them by 10 in the fourth quarter. Um, I think overall we just didn't play well. We didn't um, rebound. We, didn't, we weren't aggressive, um, especially on the boards. We didn't run the floor. That's big. We just had to have a good game. The game-changing moment came in the fourth quarter when My My Lad drove to the lane and the ref called a charge rather than an and one, which would tie the game up. The Spartans' next game is Wednesday, inside the event center when they play Fresno State. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 p.m. Brandon Clark's outstanding skill on the basketball court is giving him quite a reputation and may earn him a prestigious award. Kaveen Mystery sat down with Clark this week after their game against the San Diego Aztecs. Basketball, uh, I mean, it's, it's uh, been there forever, really. I've been playing it since I was like four or five. I mean, there's like photos of me when like I was two and like three um, uh, holding the ball and stuff. So it's just, it's just really been there always for me. So what made you want to come to San Jose State? Um, lots of things. Uh, coaches, uh, players here, uh, area here, and it just felt right. Uh, I mean, this was the college that um, obviously wanted me the most, and um, I could just feel it, and it just felt right, and it felt natural. You really become the go-to scorer for the team. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way? Um, I feel like that uh, we can all um, score, but I feel like that since I'm a uh, um, I'm a tough uh, matchup for fives because I'm six eight and I'm and I'm quick, so um, I can I can really try to score on their uh, big guys more. So um, having that, I feel like. It just, it just helps us out. So your name's been thrown around as player of the year candidate, something like that. What would that mean to you if you won something like that? I mean, it'd be cool. I mean, I think that it would just show um, how much better our team's gotten and just like uh, how much better this uh, college has has uh, grown. And um, it'd be awesome, but it's not that, that big of a deal. But if it, if it did happen, that'd be cool. All right, so you have a very unique shot, something we haven't really seen before. Yeah. We wanted you to take us through how you came about your shot. All right, well, um, uh, pretty much my uh, coach was uh, getting mad because uh, I used to shoot it with like, or kind of like this, put the ball over uh, my uh, head. And then so he just said to uh, change it and uh, like put it here more. So um, I just I just kind of changed it and I like went went from like shooting it here to like bringing it back, back down here. So I think it just helped me seeing it and it just helped with the aim and, and the shot got better overall. My favorite move is to drive left, um, spin back right and finish with the right hand. Um, I have, but if I if I drive right, I'll uh, probably either shoot a jumper or a floater, usually. So this is your thing over here. Yeah. What has become your favorite spot in the court? Uh, I would just say the paint. Um, if I if I catch it in the paint, um, I'm gonna shoot it usually because it's it's close and it's a uh, good shot for us. So. The San Jose State men's soccer team announced its 2017 recruiting class on National Signing Day. Fourth-year head coach Simon Tobin has recruited a total of seven players, including a top 150 player, a junior college All-American, and an English international. The class of 2017 includes six midfielders and one defender. Danny Sanchez, Calais Tolentino-Perry, Nicholas Bernays, Brian Neverez, Alex Ocampo, Andreas Rios, and Max Allen will all hit the pitch in the fall. Tobin hopes these signing can improve the team heading into next season after finishing the last season 4-13-2 overall. The San Jose State baseball team begins the 2017 season Friday with a new look in the dugout. First-year Spartan head coach Jason Hawkins has taken over for the team after joining SJSU from Utah. Hawkins brings an impressive resume to the team, including winning the Pac-12 championship in 2016. 
Kavin Mystery spoke with the team about the season. Big Nash, next guy. Up. Season, you know, um, we got here in, in July, and our, I guess our off season was the first two months of recruiting, and, and then the guys got on campus in August, and and we hit the ground running. And it's hard to compare these guys to anybody that we've coached, and the two of us have probably 40 years, 50 years of coaching experience combined, and these guys from doing what we ask and doing it with great effort and concentration, and those are the two things we talk about all the time. They they've done a great job, a really good job. That I think this offense can compete in this conference. I think it's, you know, it, uh, we had a very good offensive team at, at uh, Utah last year, and, and uh, this team isn't that far behind it, if in fact they are. I mean, it's there might be some things that are better about this lineup than that one. I think working with a new coach is awesome because everyone has a new chance to prove themselves and basically start over all over again. Um, and he brought in a lot of experience with them and just a whole new level of competition and integrity and accountability and he's been reflecting that on all of us. And as tight knit as we are, we have had a lot of guys come in and prove themselves this fall and a lot of new guys. Um, and I, I just think that we all have the same mindset. Um, I think we're pretty well rounded uh, in the starting side and in the bullpen. Um, the back end looks really good with Joseph Balfour and Hilario Tovar at the moment and then at the front end, me, Josh Nash, Graham Gomez, and then everybody out of the bullpen's looking like they could uh, really get it done. To help both the men's and women's golf teams compete on the national level, SGSU is constructing a state-of-the-art golf complex. It's not hard to miss the new Spartan Complex located on South Campus. The complex stretches from Humboldt Street to Alma Avenue and features a 400-yard long driving range along with tour quality putting and chipping greens. To make room for the complex, the fields of baseball, softball, and soccer teams were removed as well as the six courts used by the women's tennis team. The replacement facilities for those teams will be relocated to other areas on South Campus. Besides helping the university's golf teams, the complex, complex is designed to help SGSU interact with the community by hosting events and accommodating youth golf clinics. Jeremy, I can't wait till that new golf facility is done. I have yet to see it, but I bet, it, I bet it's looking nice. It is looking nice. And if you want to see what else looks nice, feel free to also look at our stories on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you all next week.